right, everyone, welcome back from your breakout rooms. Mr. Marr, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Yes, thank you all for the, who shared out. Um, it's really great to start meeting some of the families as well as some of the scholars. Um, and just like those little tidbits of what we need to know about them really go a long way. Uh, we keep it in the back of our mind. We share it with all the other teachers. Um, so it's actually really helpful. And thank you so much for sharing with that. Um, next slide, please, Ms. Strong. So our commitment this year, as always, is to have a he uh, health and safety for our community, to have a joyful and rigorous academics and culture, um, to be flexible with choice, have tran be transparent, and then have our supports put in place. Um, we know school, we all been through school um, and being teachers, we just want to make school such a great experience that you'll forever remember um, because if we're not enjoying our time in school, then I mean, what are we here for, right? That's why we became teachers, to, to bring joy into people's lives and to help them out academically. Um, so that's our commitment to you and we will always be transparent with you. If we mess up, if I mess up on my end, I will always be the first to let you know and apologize as well as try to seek solutions with you. Um, next slide, please, Ms. Strong. For sure. I want to just add one thing there, Mr. Marr, if you don't mind. Just um, as Mr. Marr and the team go through our reopening plan and share information um, about the different phases um, of remote and hybrid learning, um, this commitment um, is really what is at the core of all of the planning that we're doing. Um, because we know that whether we're in a brick and mortar school or whether we are online in a Zoom class, um, we've made a commitment to you as families and as scholars to provide um, the most joyful um, and rigorous school environment that we can so that your scholars um, are getting the highest quality instruction possible despite the circumstances. And I think it's really important to reiterate um, that health and safety of our community is going to come first um, in all of our planning as we move through these phases. Um, we know that not every family is in the same place um, in terms of being able to keep your kids remote or bringing them to hybrid. And so our reopening plan is really centered around flexibility and choice for families as well. Um, it is all published on our website. So um, you can see um, our entire reopening plan. And as it is updated, all of those things will be available there as well because we're committed to being very transparent with you. Um, about our planning um, to ensure that our students and our staff are, are safe and supported during this time. Um, and on wraparound supports, just wanna echo what Mr. Marr said, that we are a, a village, we're a community, we are now your village. And so we're committed not only to your child's academic success, but also um, to providing other supports that either your scholar or your family might need. Um, so as you get to know your point of contact, please surface if there are specific needs, um, whether that is around housing, around mental health supports for your child or counseling supports for your child, tech issues or Wi-Fi. Um, we are here to uh, make sure that you and your scholar have everything that you need and are able uh, to be safe during this time. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, reopening. And like Ms. Strong said, it's all, all pretty much dependent on what the government is allowing us to do, as well as what's in the best interest of our health and safety. So we are looking at three phases. We're currently in phase one, where we are all remote. Phase two, which is our potential blended option, will begin the earliest, um, Date would be October 5th. And then if at all possible, being back on campus would be our phase three. A little bit more about all of that. Um, right now we are in our welcome week, but we are going to starting next week, move into full days of remote learning. So students will be live in the morning time before noon. They'll have a lunch break and then they will be doing independent asynchronous work in the afternoons. 
Um, some students will be scheduled for small groups and it is very important that students are attending all virtual classes when they are live and also showing up in their uniform shirts, which we'll talk about more later. After that, um, we're gonna continue our mix of synchronous and asynchronous and then we're going to have um, the small groups more on Wednesdays and you'll find out more about that as we move forward in our timeline. And then beginning October 5th, hopefully we will have our hybrid. And again, the state is tentative um, and some families have selected to be completely remote during that time. And some families have selected the blended learning uh, where they will come into the school building on some days. And if you have not yet selected which option you would like, please go ahead and email gplesm at girlsprep.org. So that way we can get that registered. And a shout out to Zosha on the screen. If you don't know, um, Principal um, K at Bronx Elementary, that is his daughter who's going into, I think, second grade at Bronx Elementary. Hey, Ms. Strong, I just wanted to, if you could go back really quick, there's a slight change to the email address that is on this screen. I'm gonna pop the correct one into the chat. It's just missing something. Um, it is actually girls prep, L-E-S-M-S -S, at girlsprep.org. Um, if you have any questions about anything, um, Ms. Trez is the one that manages it and she is really good at getting back to people as soon as possible. So I'm gonna pop the correct one in the chat. All right. So this is our remote schedule uh, for this welcome week. So that is today, Thursday and Friday, we have remaining. Um, Ms. Lopez had sent out a, an email last night. Yep, yep, last night, I'm getting my days confused. Um, basically with this schedule for sixth grade. Uh, this is going to be a live document that she had sent out. So the schedule will change for next week with a new one. Uh, but as we can see for the remainder of week, um, <clears throat> we have our morning advisory starting at 8.30 to 9.00. Uh, and then we're gonna go on, kids and teachers will go on a 15 minute break and then come back for an activity, like a get to know you activity. We ask though that your scholars stay on that call even during that break. Uh, and we'll have teachers remind them tomorrow and Friday. Uh, but this just makes it easier for everyone to just turn your camera off and go on mute and then you can get a drink of water or a snack and then just come back at 9.15. Um, this way that if you leave, you don't have to come, try to come back and be left in a waiting room and have to deal with Zoom glitches. Um, but you can always find your advisory by just clicking on the ER, the RBG, or the SE tab. Um, next slide, please. Mr. Marr, will you just let uh, families and scholars know where they can find this schedule? Because I know we've put it in several places and communicated it in several ways. Yes, so we have, well, your POCs have emailed you uh, the schedule, we have kinvote it, uh, and then like I said, Ms. Lopez has uh, emailed it out last night. I suggest uh, like bookmarking or starring Ms. Lopez's email, because like I said, that's going to be a live document. So it will change with the weeks as your child's schedules change. Uh, and this is going to be the schedule for the next two weeks after this Friday. Uh, which will be coming to you as well in that live schedule. Um, like Ms. Hirschhorn had mentioned, we are going to be switching from synchronous to asynchronous learning. So if we were to look at the sixth grade Monday, Thursday schedule for ER, they are going to attend advisory at 830, which they will do every day. Um, and then on Mondays and Tuesdays from nine to 10, attend uh, history from 10 to 11, science, and then 11 to 12, they will be attending pedals. After that, they'll have lunch. And in the afternoon, from one to two, they will have asynchronous ELA work, which means it will be independent work. There will be no Zoom call. And the same for math. From two to three, it'll be independent math, um, math work with no Zoom call. However, on Tuesdays and Fridays, that schedule basically just gets flipped and they will have, again, advisory like we always do, math in the morning, ELA at 10, 
pedals at 11, lunch, and then independent work time for science, independent work time for history. Again, those schedules are coming out to you by the end of the week. Uh, they also will have the links for each content area for each advisory. And we are also sending out Google Calendar invites to the scholars' emails. I know what I just said was a lot, but does anyone have questions with the schedule? Big decision for me. What happens when our struggles to fit in start impacting our health? Dr. Todd has been studying the products Black women use in their hair for decades. Black women in we use all sorts of other products to be great. Next slide, please. No problem. I just want to, um, I believe someone's accidentally come off. If everyone can just double check their mute, um, that would be super helpful. We've got some background coming through. Awesome, thank you so much. And again, as Mr. Mars going through, if you have questions, you can feel free to utilize the chat feature. We do have teachers and staff on the call that can be responding as we go um, so that you uh, can get answers and then there will be more time for Q&A at the end. Okay, so we're just gonna go through some of the things your scholar can do to get a strong start and to end even stronger. First off, we wanna make sure we have a good, clean, clear workspace where we have ample room so we can set up our pencil, pens, notebooks, or computers. Uh, always make sure you have your charger handy. Um, get into a routine, check your schedule continuously, make sure you know where you need to be, when you need to be there, check your links, make sure they're all working. Immediately email a teacher if that becomes a problem or if for some reason you can't get into the classroom so we know how to best support you. Um, always check your tech, log off the computers at night, log them on in the morning, make sure they're charged and have your charger handy. You wanna make sure, similar to, to a, um, a workspace in school, that you have a, a good solid workspace at home. So these are just some expectations around your scholars' attendance. So your scholars should always be present for all their synchronous classes, which are their cl um, live classes that will be on a Zoom link. They should also always be in attendance for advisory because that's when we will be taking their um, attendance for the day as well as in other activities. But we do take the first set of attendance in advisory. Um, they should make sure they're joining all their small, small groups. Those are very important, as well as completing and submitting all their assignments. Participate in all assignments and have their correct name on the screen. Um, we do have new teachers. Um, we are meeting some new students for the first time, so we want to see their names as well as see their beautiful faces. So making sure that their name is um, correct on their screen as well as having their video on. And just to jump in there, we will be taking attendance for every class this year. It's not just going to be an advisory. Um, so if you have your name and face in advisory, but in ELA you do not, um, unfortunately you're going to get marked absent because as of this morning, for example, I have no idea who the kitty cat scholar was and she had her camera turned off. So unfortunately I had no idea who was here. So unfortunately that scholar got marked absent. Thanks, Mr. Marr. And I, I, I did see a question, um, a teacher already responded in the chat, but this is a shift from last year. And I think it's important to note that when we made the transition to remote learning in March, um, it was an unprecedented uh, series of events. And we were really building the plane while we were flying, um, trying to make the changes and adjustments in the moment um, that we needed to make. We needed to provide a level of flexibility we knew for students and families because um, we, not everyone had access to the same tech. We had not provided one-to-one -one devices. Now that we are planning for remote learning, um, we know what we are um, what we are getting ourselves into and we have those systems. And so it's really important um, that students are present for all of their classes. Um, because we want to create um, as much consistency in our school day as possible. I also want to note, though, that that does not mean that your scholar is going to be sitting on camera for six, back to back to back to back to back every moment of the day. Teachers are working really hard uh, to build lessons that include 
independent and asynchronous time off camera so that scholars can get that done throughout the day. We are very aware that screen fatigue is real. It's hard for us as adults, and we, we understand that for scholars. So we are going to have a very balanced um, amount of work time and face time, but it is really critical in order to be counted fully present for the day that your scholar is in attendance and that they have their video on and their name on the screen. Um, so just wanted to reiterate, um, in order to be fully present for the day, they do need to attend all of their classes and um, their small groups. Uh, so speaking of being in full attendance, one of the key things about this year too that we want to emphasize is that one of the expectations for online live classes is that our scholars are in their uniform shirts. We want them to kind of build that routine of being in uniform, feeling scholarly, and getting back into the routines of when they're gonna uh, come back to the school. So it's a great way to just start the morning, really feel like you're present and engaged and really feel academic and get into that school mindset. And so it'll also just help us build up that community because we still are the girls prep family, even when we're remote. Um, even if you're chiming in from Alaska, you're still a part of this school during the remote world. So please make sure that your scholar has the uniform shirts. Um, and just as a note for that too, we know that some families are still waiting for their uniforms to arrive. Um, please just know that that's okay. We understand, just make sure you message your teacher um, so that they know that, you know, you're just waiting for the uniform to come. So um, something Ms. Strong um, touched on a little bit is um, tech for the scholars. Um, so Girls Prep um, has tried really hard to achieve tech equity for all of our scholars this year, which means that we want everyone to have their own device. So um, we're trying to get every scholar with a device so that no one has to share with a sibling. Um, we know everyone has overlapping schedules. Um, so um, if you were not able to get a device for your scholar, uh, please let us know right away um, and we will um, help you figure that out. Um, we recommend for the older scholars that they use the standard Chromebooks. Um, and another really important thing about this is um, reliable Wi-Fi access. So if you um, are struggling with Wi-Fi, please also let us know. We've been trying to work with some community organizations to make sure that all of our scholars um, have Wi-Fi um, and that it's reliable because it's really important. Um, one of the things with having um, the school provided Chromebook is that if you do have a problem, if something goes wrong or there's an issue, the IT department can help you with that. Whereas if you're using your own tech and you have an issue, then it's a lot harder for um, us to help you figure that out. So we do highly recommend that um, all the scholars get one of the school issued Chromebooks. And again, um, if you need any help with that, please um, reach out to your point of contact and they will get you where you need to go for that. After school, my favorite time of the day. So um, first day of after school will be September 14th and we will be virtual just like the school day, but um, hopefully we will be back in the building for hybrid October 5th. So we will be continuing after school and we will follow the school's hybrid model. So some virtual, some in person. So don't worry if your scholar has chosen to be fully virtual, we will have virtual programs for your scholars to join in with us. Um, the applications are still open, so if you are interested, my email is there and I'll drop it in the chat so you can send it off to me. And even if you're not interested in your scholar being virtual right now if, and you're more interested in hybrid, it is always best to get your application in as soon as possible so that we have it on file so that once we're back in the building, your scholar can join right away. I look forward to seeing all your lovely children. <laughs> And now moving into the best, the academic slides of chats where everyone wants to know what we're gonna read or what we're going to be doing all year. Um, before we break out into rooms, so you can get to ask all those questions, um, we're gonna break up into humanities, so like ELA and history are gonna go together and 
uh, math and science are going to go together and then we will swap after so we can answer all of your questions. But just an overarching um, thing that we are using this year, uh, we're focusing on our social emotional learning. Um, I know in the past and so many of the students who are on here will, will and can tell you about Sister Circle. We are going to be shifting our Sister Circle just slightly this year and we will be using a new curriculum um, that we as adults have been using for the past three weeks um, and that we are going to be using in all classes. So not just in advisory, but you will be seeing mood meters in ELA. We will be asking students about their feelings and how, how they are going, doing that day in the hallway, um, just as a way to build up our social emotional learning. Um, so don't be surprised or annoyed or or be annoyed when your scholar is asking you to label your feelings if you're high energy, low energy, positive. Um, they're just learning from us. You can tell them you're annoyed because that's the goal as well. So we are breaking out into groups and you will be able to see a little bit or learn a little bit more about the humanities and STEM. Welcome back, everyone. I'm gonna get this back up. All right, I think everyone is back in the room. We're almost back in the room. Um, I am happy to take this one for you, Mr. Mark, because I know Ms. Stoller is not on the call. Uh, for new families, Ms. Stoller is our Assistant Director of Student Support. She works um, at both our elementary campus and our middle school campus doing all things related to student support services. So if your scholar has an IEP, she is going to be um, one of the point people um, for all questions regarding compliance and services. Um, and so just want to um, share a little bit about student supports in remote learning. Um, ICT services um, are going to be happening virtually. So um, we do have ICT across all four content areas. And so um, that will be able to continue even in remote learning. Um, our SETS services um, are going to be happening virtually starting on week three. So if your scholar gets small group um, support for reading or math, um, that will happen virtually starting on week three. Um, for students that have um, related services such as speech therapy, occupational therapy, or physical therapy, um, we will continue to provide related services um, through our uh, contracted agency with the DOE. Um, and so there will be more information coming soon about when those services will begin. Um, but know that we are um, going to have our, we've had the same speech therapist for quite a few years in a row. Miss Amanda, you may be familiar with her. She will be back um, and our occupational therapy provider will be as well. We're excited uh, to have that consistency. And counseling is also going to be starting um, remotely. And Ms. George will be reaching out to families um, to finalize consent for those sessions. Um, and they will be starting within the first weeks of school. Um, so we know that remote learning is challenging for all students, 
I didn't have to learn remotely till I was in college and I still struggled with it as an adult. Um, and so we are committed to ensuring that we provide the supports that students need to be successful. More information will also be coming around paraprofessional services. If your scholar has a paraprofessional, um, the uh, Committee on Special Education and the DOE are still finalizing exactly what those services look like remotely. And as soon as we have the finalized plan, we'll be sharing it with you all. Uh, and this is just the friendly public library tab of uh, as we are in a virtual world and as it is difficult to go out and either attend a physical library or a bookstore, um, the New York Public Library, um, you are able to get a free digital library card and navigate through their online resources and download, um, as they call it, Simply E or just an ebook. Um, because we at Girls Prep really push for literacy and uh, the love of reading, um, we really encourage everyone to take advantage of the New York Pu uh, Public Library and get their library card and download free ebooks. Um, this kind of goes to a question that uh, someone had about novels and ELA. Um, as we are navigating through virtual learning and this pandemic, um, we are currently trying to figure out a way to get scholars novels. Um, whether that is on an ebook or if we can find a way to send a physical copy, we are trying to figure all that out now. Uh, in the meantime, though, we have sources like the New York Public Library, um, as well as uh, New ELA that we can provide students for the time being in ELA class with rich texts. Um, we are also great resources for independent reading books. Um, I know. Um, Mr. LaRose and Mr. Jorian are tech savvy and all can find all things ebooks as well as audiobooks to help us follow along as we're reading. Um, I know personally from last year, we encourage even just YouTube. If you search the, you know, the Giver audiobook, they will have it there. But I strongly suggest you watch that video before you're a scholar, just in case some rogue person started reading a random book. Um, so if anyone has any questions, um, now's the time to ask. You can come off mute. You can put them in the chat. Uh, we're all here to answer. And if we can't answer, we will definitely find that person to answer it for you. Any questions about anything, content, um, returning, um, where I got my cardigan, anything? The answer is my grandfather. Well, awesome. Um, we have finished on time. Um, I thank you so much for joining us, taking some time out of your very busy schedule. Um, it was really nice to talk to you all, and we can't wait moving forward to hopefully meet you in person. Um, that's my hope, at least. Um, so thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. For having us. <laughs> thank you. And Ms. Lugo, yes, there is a way we can get you all the teacher's contact info. We can put together a video for you and send that over so that you know uh, you have the email addresses of everyone on the team, not a problem. Awesome, thank you. No problem at all. Have a great evening, everyone. Take care. Thank you, you too, be safe, bye. You too, stay safe.